today we're looking at the Ryobi 40 volt cordless string trimmer. I'm going to show you how well it works. Can it cut through thick grass as good as gas trimmers? How long does the battery last? And I'll also let you know if I recommend this electric trimmer over a gas powered one. I will just say that there is a downside to it, but it does have a solution, but more on that later. So let's get the show started. By the way, here is a timeline of the video in case you are looking for a specific part of it. Now let's get started with the review. We'll begin with the charger review. The charger is a fraction of the size of the 40 volt battery. The charging cord itself is removable. This comes with five indicating lights, power on, testing, error, charging, and ready. This is a slide in charger that locks into place on the battery. This is released by pressing down on the lever on the battery. This battery is currently full, but I'll be using it until it stops working, just so you can see how long it lasts and how long it takes to charge up. Next, we have the string trimmer and some additional accessories that were included in the box. This comes with a plastic guard, a handle, some string for your trimmer, and you also get a speed winder or crank handle, however you wanna call it. This is to help you reload the string faster. The trimmer head is entirely made out of plastic, However, the piece holding the trimmer head to the pole is metal, which makes it stronger than some of their other electric trimmer options, if you ask me. I've seen some more economical electric trimmers of Ryobi, but the entire thing is plastic, which makes it susceptible to break sooner, in my opinion. This model itself is part of the expanded attachments line, so you can swap out the trimmer and attach other tools like the saw or other tools that are compatible. This comes with a safety lock that needs to be pressed down on the trigger to turn on the trimmer. That's a nice safety feature, so you won't accidentally press it down and end up hurting yourself. The battery slides in and locks in place on the back of the tool. The trigger itself is a variable speed trigger, which means you can control the acceleration as you press on the trigger, which is a nice feature given that some electric trimmers only give you low speed or high speed options. This gives it the feel of a gas trimmer for those of you who enjoy controlling the acceleration with the trigger. I know I do. The trimmer head already comes with some string on it when you first pull it out of the box. At least mine did. But let's go ahead and pop off the bottom cap to show you what the inside looks like. Now it's important to note that you don't need to remove the cap to reload your string. That can be done with the cap on. To remove the cap, all you have to do is twist from lock to unlock mode. You only have one part inside of the head, which is the plastic part where the string wraps around on. In case you ever need to remove it, this is how you do that. To restring the trimmer, you just need to make sure the holes align. You can tell once you see light on the other side of the hole. Then you just slide in your string, get it to the measurement you need, and then you take your crank handle and use that to wind up your string inside. Again, you don't have to take off the trimmer head to restring. You can do this with the head locked in place to the rest of the trimmer. I just wanted to show you how it looked on the inside. Okay, so now let's take this outside and put it to the test. I will say I was impressed with the power of the motor. This can cut through some thick grass and weeds pretty good. As you can see here, this is cutting through those grass stumps without much of a problem. The power that it has is similar to a gas weed eater. So if you were looking to get this trimmer for small trimmings or for edging, this has more than enough power for small tasks like that. And you can control the speed just like a gas one. So if you have a part of grass that is not too thick, that you don't require maximum speed, you can slow down the trimmer to cut through it and you save some battery life. So I understand that the grass I'm cutting here is quite thick and I'm really pressing down on that throttle to cut through it. I did notice that my battery life went down one bar in less than 10 minutes. It's important to note that even though this went down one bar, it doesn't mean you've lost one fourth of your battery. It could be that you've lost one sixteen or one eighth of your battery. That's why I think that future models should have a digital gauge to show you exactly how much battery is left. Whether it's 90% or 75%, a digital reader would give you a more accurate reading of how much battery you have left versus using just four bars. So it was 11.50 a.m. when I started to cut the grass. And about five to 10 minutes in, that's when I saw that my battery went down one bar. But like I said, that just means I don't have a 100% charged battery. I could still have like 93%. I continue to cut more thick grass. Everything I'm cutting is tall and thick for the most part. I even cut the grass that grows between the concrete slabs and this trimmer did a good job on that too. It is now 12.06 and you can see that I am down to two bars. So I continue to cut more tall grass and weeds and finally the battery gave out at 12.46 p.m. So the battery lasted about 55 minutes, almost an hour. Again, I was going kind of heavy on the accelerator because I did have some thick grass I was cutting. So it did a pretty good job in my opinion. Here's the downside though. So I put the battery to charge at 12.50. I came back to check at it 
at 2.29 p.m. and the battery was still on the second bar. This means that at this rate, it is going to take about four hours to fully charge. I've seen some people comment that it takes them six to eight hours to get their battery to fully charge. So that is something you want to consider. Ryobi does sell a 40 volt rapid charger that it's supposed to recharge your battery in one hour, but you have to dish out an additional $99. Or you can find a pre-owned one online, which I've seen them run around $30. I just don't see why Ryobi didn't include the fast charger from the beginning inside the box. I understand that they're trying to make some extra cash selling this charger separately, but I feel they should have just added the difference of the cost to the price tag of the weed eater and stop production of the super slow chargers. I would think that the slow charging probably would deter people from purchasing the trimmer in the first place. Similar case like fast chargers on the phones. It's a selling point. But what do you think? Should Ryobi just do away with the slow chargers and include the fast charger on all products and just hike up the price a few more dollars? Let me know in the comments. So is this better than a gas trimmer? The answer, well, it depends. The benefit of a gas trimmer is that you just fill the tank and continue to cut away. Whereas with an electric trimmer, you need to wait until the battery charges. You have to calculate how much grass you're going to be cutting and how long does the battery last on your trimmer. In my case, I'll mainly be using my gas mower to do most of the cutting and I'll mainly be using the trimmer for those hard to reach areas or if the grass is too long and also for the edges. So for the moment, one battery is good enough for me, but I do plan to get the fast charger plus an additional battery just in case. But if you're planning to get this for a landscaping business, I still think that gas powered ones are a better option because you can just refill the tank and continue to trim away. But if you're planning to get an electric trimmer for your business, I would recommend you get extra batteries and that you get yourself the fast chargers. Otherwise, you'll end up running out of juice and then you'll have to wait for hours before your battery charges again. So definitely buy the extra batteries and the fast charger if you plan to use it for an extended amount of time throughout the day. I've seen landscapers that have electric trimmers and mowers, but they're fully prepared and with extra batteries and some of the best electric equipment out there. They spend thousands of dollars to make sure they have the best equipment and don't run out of batteries. So definitely something to consider. It's important to also note that the tool comes with a five-year limited warranty and the battery comes with a three-year warranty during the recording of this video. That may help you to calculate how much it'll truly cost you versus a gas trimmer. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would. But like I said, if you can, buy the extra batteries and the fast charger because that would make your life a lot easier. You don't have to wait until the one battery you have charges. You can just swap out the batteries, but at least you don't have to deal with any more maintenance like you do with gas trimmers. No more changing the spark plug or buying fuel. Those days are over, but you must make sure to charge your batteries. If you have this string trimmer, let me know in the comment section. What do you think of it? Has it worked out for you? Do you regret getting it? Do you prefer gas or are you extremely comfortable with it? Or is there another electric trimmer that you recommend? Let me know in the comment section. And today we are looking at the Ryobi 18 volt cordless jet fan blower. We'll put it to the test and I'll also let you know if I recommend it or if it is that I regret the purchase. So let's get started. I already own a blower, but it's got one problem. And that is that, well, it's a corded one. So I wanted to get one that I could just grab and blow with without the hassle of actually getting an extension cord. So I went to Home Depot and got myself this blower right here. Now this runs on the Ryobi 18 volt battery packs. I was hesitant at first to get it because I was leaning more towards a gas powered one. But let me show you what this blower can do. Now CFM stands for cubic feet per meter, which indicates the power of the volume of air per minute. The larger the CFM, the larger the area your blower can cover. So this one has 350 CFM. It's not the biggest one they have, but I believe it's a decent size for my yard. So anyways, the assembly of this is pretty straightforward. You get the blower nozzle, which you can also use as an arm cast if you ever get injured. And you also get the blower itself. You also get the manual and a whole bunch of papers. But we won't even be looking at those because this is so easy to operate, I think. I would definitely carry this around as part of a Halloween costume. Because this looks like a futuristic gun. Something out of a video game. It looks like it'll start shooting laser beams once I enter the battery pack. Anyways, here is the handle, which you grab onto, and the trigger. You can also see two more things. First, the top part where you plug in your 18 volt battery, and on the bottom, the vent through where the air is sucked in through. And if you look deep inside, you can see the brushless motor. Now the assembly of this is quite easy. All you do is align the nozzle to the clips on the blower, and you snap it into place. From there, you just plug in your battery and you're good to start blowing away. Now, as you press the trigger, I notice that the motor begins to build up acceleration. Whereas on my corded blower, you just switch the on button and you instantly get the punch of air coming out. 
But that's okay, I guess I can wait a second before it reaches its full potential. But that's something to consider. But once you've maxed the trigger, it's actually quite strong. The good thing about the trigger as well is that you can control the amount of air you're blowing based on how much you pull the trigger. So you don't have to use it all full blast all the time. The less you press the trigger, the less the air that'll blast out. It's strong enough to blow the box away without a problem. Now let's put it to the test and clean out a few areas. My smartwatch here says it's currently 4.39 p.m. So let's test out the blower for a few minutes and see how much battery this thing uses. And just so you can see, I have a full battery, four bars. First off, I have these tiles that always get covered with dust and dirt and all sorts of debris. So let's clean that part out first. And just like that, we can now see just how much better the tiles look after a quick blow. Here's a ball as well. Let's blow that out of the way. So it works well when trying to clear debris such as leaves, cut grass, dirt. It doesn't have much of a problem. It is now 4.47 p.m. so I've used it about 8 minutes and my battery has dropped one bar. So you can say that it'll run about 30 to 35 minutes on a full charge at full blast. Now if you have a big yard and you usually use your blower for much longer or if you have some sort of landscaping business then it would be best you have multiple batteries fully charged to use throughout the day because one battery itself will not do the job for big yards I believe. If you own multiple batteries, that's great news though. One flaw I did notice is that the suction vent tends to suck my shirt towards it. So that itself may be a bother because you can't have it too close to your shirt or you'll get it sucked right in and lose some blast power on the front end. I think a better design would have been if they put the suction vent on the side or on the bottom. So now compared with my $30 corded Black & Decker, my corded one is smaller it actually has more CFM power. I'm not sure exactly how much, but I do feel it is more powerful. But then again, it's a corded, so I'm getting more power from the socket. Also, the suction vent is on the bottom, so it doesn't pull my shirt. So do I regret buying this Ryobi blower? The answer is no. And the main reasons why is because one, I do not have a big lawn. So the amount of time I'll be using this will probably range about 30 to 40 minutes. Two, I have extra batteries, so in case I need to get more use out of it, I'll just switch out the battery. And finally three, it is so convenient to just grab a battery pack, plug it in, and start to use it. It beats having to plug in my quarter one. I'm sure I'll be using the Ryobi blower far more now than what I use my quarter Black & Decker. If you own one of these blowers, let me know what you think of it. Do you like it? Do you regret getting one? What are your pros and cons? Let me know in the comment section. And with this, we conclude today's video. If you've watched until the end, I thank you for your time. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That is all I have for you all today. Thank you for watching and have yourself a great day.